This is the For the Culture podcast. I'm your host, Jason Spears, coming at you after a 17-16 to loss to the Washington Commanders. A late comeback in the fourth quarter by the Commanders after the Colts took a 16-7 lead with about eight minutes to go in the game. Gave up a field goal and then game-winning drive in the last two, three minutes of the game. Uh, big plays to Terry McLaurin. He absolutely killed us in this game. Uh, really close game, but at the end of the day, this is just not a good football team, and they continue to find ways to lose games that they should win, and this is just another one of those games. Before I even get into the game, though, I want to give my thoughts and prayers to Taekwon Lewis, who went down with a pretty significant knee injury, had to be carted off the field. He had come back from a really bad patella injury and have been playing really good football and to see him get hurt really sucks because uh, he's one of those guys that goes out there and gives everything he has every week, whether he's at the end or inside at the three. Uh, he's been really good for the Colts this year. So that's a significant loss for this for this team uh, for the rest of the year. It looks like it's probably going to be a, I mean, hopefully not. Nothing's been announced, but I think it's probably a significant injury. could make it off the field they had to bring the card out and he knew right away uh so i just wanted to to start off because some things bigger than wins and losses and that guy's been through a lot and uh really feel bad for him but uh hopefully he'll get back healthy and whether it's with the colts or not next year hopefully he'll uh go on to have a really long career because he's a good guy and he's really given a lot to the colts over his time and he's gotten a hell of a lot better so uh thoughts and prayers out to him hopefully he gets well soon uh, but getting into the game it was a struggle early. Um, you know, the offensively, the Colts really, I think, I think Sam was a little amped up and geeked up and he was a, a little off early in the game, but, um, then he was a little high, which is to be expected. I expected him to be a little off early on, but I thought as the game went along, he played significantly better. I thought his footwork was solid. He was very accurate. Um, didn't put the ball in harm's way too much. I think there was one or two early on that were were a little, you know, sketchy as far as throws go. But as the game went on, I thought he played well enough to win. He obviously had the turnover that you can't have. We had two of them. We moved the ball, I thought, pretty well. But again, this team in the red zone or, you know, the high red zone is just awful. They find they just find new ways every week to, to screw up. Uh, Jonathan Taylor had a really, really good, efficient game but again a killer turnover um that you just can't have and i've beat this to death but good teams do not turn the ball over um you know and they find a way to get turnovers they win the turnover battle this team's lost the turnover battle all year long when they haven't they've won again they lose it today they, they turn it over twice they only get one um it's just not a good team, guys. It is what it is. I mean, we're three, four, and one. We're finding ways to lose. Again, good teams play complementary football. When the offense plays well, like scoring 10 points in the fourth quarter after they only scored six up until that point, or was it seven? No, they scored six up until that point and then scored 10 in the fourth. And then the defense had only given up seven, but they give up 10 in the fourth. That's the offense wakes up, the defense goes to sleep. Um, seen a lot of people say you can't blame the defense yeah yeah, you can yeah, they had a nine point lead with eight minutes to go and they gave it back um so, i mean it's team loss offense played bad defense played well then the offense played well and the defense played bad that's what bad teams do uh, they don't play well together they don't sync up and that's what that's what this game was uh just a continuation of that uh i thought defensively down the stretch we weren't getting any pass rush. I would have liked to seen a little bit more creativity from Gus Bradley. There was really no, I mean, it was just basic defense. There was nothing really I saw that changed down the stretch of this game. There was no pressures. There was no, nothing dialed up from the corner spot or just to, just to, you know, screw up the timing, get them off rhythm. It just, it's just a tough loss, a frustrating loss, but I try to look at the positives and hopefully going forward, we're going to play young players. Um, you know, the offensive line prior should not be playing. Um, he shouldn't even be on the roster to be honest with you, but I would settle for him just not playing, but 
I mean, the, 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 I thought the game plan was conservative and I understood it to an extent, but if you can't get six inches, you don't deserve to win. And we had two opportunities. There's a, there was a third and goal where we ran into the line and then kicked a field goal from like the one yard line. Um, I don't know why you don't line up on that third and goal and just run a quarterback sneak. I don't understand it. It's not difficult. Tom Brady can do it. Sam Ellinger can do it. Excuse me. Sam Ellinger can do it. Uh, then the other play at the end of the game, I get it. You want to trust your defense, but why not just get the first down? If you don't get it and they go in and score, which they would have to do, then you have more time. But I just thought Frank, Frank Reich mismanaged this game all over the place. Uh, I don't think it really matters. This is not a good team, but I just thought from the top down uh, wasn't a good performance. I thought it was ultra conservative and I get it on some levels, but when the game's on the line, you got to go take it. You can't, uh, you just can't play passive. You can't be uh, a guy that, I mean, he, he's not a passive guy and like, we're just go get the win. You know what I mean? Like, if you can't get six inches, they get the ball, they go score, there's time left, whatever. But we punted. I guess that, you know, I guess that's the smart play. But you know how the season's gone. You know that when the offense has done something well, the defense is going to do something bad. It's just the way it is. And I don't know. Um, I thought Sam played fine. I really thought, you know, he had – I think it was 17 to 23 for 200. Uh, he had a beautiful pass to Pittman at the end of the game that would have probably got a, gotten us into field goal range. I mean, he just, it was a perfectly delivered ball right on the money with him able to run and he just dropped the ball. And again, bad teams, this is what they do. They don't make plays. They don't make winning plays. This team does not make winning plays. I don't care if Matt Ryan's back there. I don't camp, care if Sam Ellinger is back there. The same problems uh, arise with this team on defense. They don't get turnovers. The only guy that seemingly can get a turnover is Darius Leonard or Shaq Leonard, whatever, but he was only on the field for 20 snaps. Nobody else on this defense defense makes any plays. Uh, you got to take the ball away. We don't take it away enough. That team doesn't force turnovers yet. We gave them two. It's just not going to win. And, and honestly, like looking at the schedule, there's not, a, I don't see a lot of wins on the schedule. This team is not well coached. They're not, uh, they don't do anything really well. I mean, the defense is, is av I mean, maybe a little above average, but the lack of turnovers makes it average to me, which is really disappointing because I thought they would be a top five defense and I thought they'd force turnovers. They just haven't. And it is what it is with them. Hopefully they'll make some deals at the trade deadline, whether it's Ryan Kelly or DeForest Buckner or whatever. Um, I, I just, I don't know how you stand pat with this roster and not try to get some draft capital for next year because we're not catching the Titans. Um, and so I, and, and Jim Irsay's vote of confidence. I don't really care about that as far as Ballard and Wright go. I don't think that means jack shit. Uh, he's not going to come out and be like, you know, these aren't the guys. I, I, I think he's going to watch the rest of the season, see how Sam plays and make a decision. Uh, if they bring them back, I mean, at this point, we're just accepting it. We're just accepting being bad, accepting being, you know, mediocre. Uh, I don't trust this regime to get the quarterback right or the left tackle right or the pass rush right. Um, I just don't. And that's where I'm at with that. And, and I want a new GM and I want a new head coach. I want a whole new staff. I want. I just want all of this, like, I, I just want a whole different setup for this team. I don't like the... I, there's just no sense of urgency from our coach. There's no um, accountability for bad play. I mean, it's a lot of the stuff that we saw with Pagano. Um, you know, how much of Matt Pryor do we have to see? How much of Brandon Faison do we have to see? Um, so as far as, you know, the, the, the overall health of the, organization going forward uh it's not great and i don't know how anyone could possibly think in year six and year five respectively that these are the two guys to lead us forward can you know considering this is regression every year i mean we've gone from a team that was trending upward in 2020 that's 
completely nosedive since the nine and six record we had going into the final two weeks of last year. And I don't see it getting any better. So, I mean, give credit for, give credit to the commanders. They hung in there. Uh, Heineke made plays down the stretch. Clore made a great play. He's a great player. Um, but they're not good. They're not a good team, but that just shows you how bad we are. And, you know, I, I just, like I, I said on Twitter, I just want to see Sam play. I want, you know, the training wheels off. I want to see him make all the throws. I don't want the dialed back playbook or any of that shit. I just want him to give him the whole playbook. He knows it. He knows it better than any quarterback on this roster. Let him have it all, give it to him and let's see what he can do. Uh, be aggressive. Um, you know, be creative. You've got a quarterback that, that can do a lot of different things. His arm looked fine. Um, Ball placement was good. Footwork looked good. Now, again, I haven't watched the All-22, and I actually might watch it this week because there's a reason to kind of care uh, because we're, we saw a new quarterback. But he didn't get any help from his teammates. Thought the offensive line was okay. But, I mean, drop pass. we had, I think, two or three drop passes. Um, fumble, I mean, fumbling the ball. Uh, defense just down the stretch was bad. Um, And I know the argument is, you know, they gave up 17 points. That should be enough. You know, you should be able to score more than 17. That's fair. But when you've given up seven going into the last eight minutes of the game, and then you give up 10, you deserve some blame. I mean, they had a 16 to seven lead and they pissed it away. So I'm not one of these people that's just going to completely blame everybody except the defense. I think Gus Bradley, down the stretch did not help uh, his D line. He didn't bring any extra pressure. He didn't make Heineke make quicker decisions. He didn't do anything. He just set back with, with uh, seven and we got cooked just straight up cooked. So um, going forward, I just, like I said, I want to see Ryman at left tackle. Uh, I want to see fries at right guard. I want to see, you know, guys on defense, Blackman, uh, Thomas, EJ Speed, Danny Penter on off, you know, at center. I just want to see all the guys that could be a part of our future or could not based on how they play. We need to give them a chance to play. So the next people that come in here, but again, these guys are trying to save their jobs. So I don't expect any of this to happen. This is just what I want to happen because I think it's best for the overall health of our franchise. But going forward, man, I, I just I don't I don't have a lot of hope for wins. So I'm just trying to see individual improvement. And that starts with Sam. Uh, I think for a first game, it was really I think he was really solid. They didn't give I didn't I didn't think they overwhelmed him. And I thought he made a lot of good reads, a lot of good plays with his feet. Um, but this next test, this is the real deal, because Belichick's going to bring it all. He is going to bring the everything he's got. He's going to bring blitzes, exotic blitzes, different stunts and twists with the D line. It's, I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna be a test for him because our offensive line is going to be overmatched in this game. There's no question by blitzes. Um, you know, the Colts are like when teams blitz them from different angles. It's like a Chinese fire drill, and it's not fun. Uh, so Sam's got his work cut out for him this week. I don't know what the game plan could possibly be um, other than. I guess running it a bunch, which I don't really want to see. Uh, so, but the guys around him, I thought Paris was good. I thought, you know, we really, it was good to see him. He's really coming into his own this year. I'm happy for him. I thought Pierce had some nice plays. Uh, Pitt was okay, but man, he's got to make that catch. I mean, number one, he's a number one receiver. There's no argument there, but he's got to make that catch. Um, Hines was really good. So there was a lot of positive I saw out of the offense, but they just keep, you know, the killer, the penalties are killers, whether it's Pryor or Nelson, those, those penalties are killers. And then, you know, the drop passes, these are just things you can't do and win against anyone. Uh, And the Redskins, excuse me, the commanders have been fairly competitive. Um, They're four and four. They're, you know, They're what they are. They're not great. They're kind of basically us in the NFC. Um, So just going over the game again, offense, I thought was okay. 
they didn't score enough points. That's the bottom line. Just get 16 points is not enough. Another week of not scoring 20. Uh, offensive line wasn't good enough. They don't move anybody in the run game. T- to be fair, the commanders have a very good D line and they, they, they played well. But at some point, these guys have to step up and hold each other accountable because this, this shit's not good enough. Um, thought the I thought the uh, I thought the skill players were okay. Paris was good, like I said. Going over the defense, I thought Buck and Grover were outstanding. I thought uh, Zaire was solid. EJ was solid. Darius really struggled, but made a big interception to get the ball back to the offense to go down there and put him up 16 to seven. Uh, Kenny Moore had got, got roasted a couple times. Gilmore was in good position. Um, but you know, you, you, that's just a great play by McLaurin. Um, but you just got to find a way to close a game out when you have a lead like that. And we just didn't do it. So, um, you know, next week's new England on the road, I'll be interested to see how Sam plays and the elements outside, how that arm plays again. You know, hopefully this is the the floor and we're going to see him improve every week, but that's probably going to be an up and down process because you're, you're facing different teams every week that are going to do different things. But for me, again, the season now is about having questions answered. Is Sam the guy or are we drafting a guy? That's a question that will be answered in the next nine games. Um, you know, is rhyme in the left tackle Are you know, are we set with our young safeties? What, you know, just, just, this season can't just be a loss. There has to be something accomplished in it. And what I mean by that is they have to figure out if these guys are going to be part of the future or if they're just not good enough. And then the next GM is going to have to come in and make decisions based on that. If, you know, we make a change, which I would think we would. We've given, the, you've given Ballard six years. You've given Reich five. If you get rid of Ballard, I don't know why you keep Reich. That's not really a good way to run an organization, force a coach on another you know, force a coach on a GM, which they kind of did in this situation. Um, so, I mean, based out of the guys they had to choose from, though, I guess Reich was probably the best choice. But uh, hopefully this is it for this regime because I've seen enough. I mean, five, six years, no division titles. Haven't won a playoff game since 2018. I, I don't know who could possibly be in favor of keeping any of these guys around after this amount of time. And just the complete regression, you know, the slow start. I mean, it's all just so old. It's just so old. I mean, Christ, we haven't led a game. I think it's been 10 straight games we haven't led at the half. Can you – 10? That's – I mean, that's unheard of. So, anyway, guys, I don't really know what to to talk about in these post games or wrap-ups, recaps, whatever you want to call them, because it's kind of the same game over and over again. We turn the ball over, uh, you know, make mistakes, shoot, or shoot ourselves in the foot. The all offensive line plays bad. We drop passes, get penalties. It's kind of the same rinse, repeat crap. But I'll keep coming on here because this is what I do, and I watch the games. And you know, I don't want you guys to feel like you're you're alone with the frustration and the disappointment. I picked this team to win 13 games. I look like the biggest moron on the face of the planet. I thought with a veteran quarterback it would make everything better, make the offensive line better, skill position players better, so on and so forth. It just didn't happen. So um, that's all I got, guys. I I don't have any more. I'm not really angry anymore. I've kind of reached the acceptance stage of what this team is. I mean, um, we're pretty much 10 games deep into this now where we're three, six, and one. Um, So – it doesn't matter last season, this season. I mean, we're, we're bad and we're not, I don't see any way anything changes. So I'm going to wrap this up. I appreciate you guys listening. I will be back probably Thursday with a new England preview. Um, it's just been such a disappointing year. And this game is kind of a microcosm of, of what this season's been just, we just can't get out of our own way and there's really nothing else to say. I mean, I don't know where we go from here. I think at some point the defense is just going to say, fuck it. Uh, I mean, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope they continue to play hard, but it's gotta be frustrating. Um, but they got to help themselves too, man. They were given a 16, seven lead. All they had to do was hold a nine point lead for eight minutes against a middling football team at best and a backup quarterback and they couldn't do it. So, That's what bad teams do, and the Colts are just a bad team. So with that, I'm going to wrap this up. I will talk to you guys soon here on the For the Culture podcast.